For more than 70 years, many organizations have worked to improve the well-being of people living in what we call the Global South. Throughout these 70 years, the world has changed dramatically. But the way in which we support these people has remained more or less the same. Should we change it? In the heart of India, there's Tikamgar, one of the poorest places in the country. The people living here frequently face severe hunger and droughts. In 1998, Oxfam supported its fisher people to organize into cooperatives and use new fishing techniques and materials. They caught and sold more fish than ever. But this brought a problem. People from powerful elites had controlled fishing in these ponds. They felt threatened and began to expel the fisher people. Oxfam's work had an unintended consequence. Most of the time, we split our work between different approaches. Some of us work with a focus on creating a sustainable food system, others on improving governance, others on gender justice, others work in response to emergencies. This is one of our learnings from these years. Working separately causes problems. Poverty and hunger are always about power. Who has it and who does not have it? And Tikumgar's case shows us we can never avoid addressing power. But not only that, opportunities also appear and sometimes we don't see them because our specific visions. The fishing cooperatives we supported could have been used to make political action and ask the authorities for justice. Also, one of the newborn cooperatives was run by women. In a region where women and girls are not usually given leadership opportunities, this was a unique chance to build change. After all that, there was a long three-year drought in Tikamgar, and the conflict increased. And again, this had an unexpected effect. It made things happen. The fisher people, men and women, used their cooperatives to put pressure on the government. They gained legal protection and the lease of many of the ponds that they use now not only to fish, but also for vegetable cultivation during the dry months. Instead of weakening the community, the long drought increased self-organization and leadership. Long-standing social and gender-based power structures began to change. They now have higher levels of income and more economic development. The fisher people had not recovered from the long drought. To recover would mean to return to the same state of vulnerability. No, they came out of the crisis stronger, better prepared for new crises and with less chance of reverting back to poverty, powerlessness or hunger. This was another important learning. In every crisis, the deep-rooted causes of poverty and inequality become more evident, creating additional problems, but also opportunities where people can move from poverty to power. Each crisis holds transformative opportunities at all levels. We must learn to identify and work with them. But that can only be made if we put together our different approaches. All of them fit together in what we call resilient development. Resilience, the ability of women, men and children to realize their rights and improve their well-being despite shocks and uncertainty, is a word you hear a lot these days. It's unsurprising. The world of today is the world of climate change, the largest system of humanitarian, environmental and political crises we've ever experienced. Crises such as sea level rises or droughts mean refugees, poverty, increase in gender inequality. Challenges we previously saw as separate now fit together in this greater system, related to each other. Making unique opportunities apparent. So yes, we need to change the way we work. We've learned how to do it. It's time to make resilient development.